Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. And in this week's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can change the checkboxes and radio buttons in the Divi Contact form module. Instead of just being in one vertical straight line, which is not very nice, I'm gonna show you how to make them horizontal in line. And I'm also going to show you how you can put them into columns, like one, two, three, four, five, whatever. All right, so let's take a look at this. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click the link in the description because that's where you'll go to this blog post and you need to do that to get the snippets that I'm going to share. So what I have here in this tutorial is actually two different kind of things. They're very similar, but they're different. Um, the one would be to put these checkboxes and radio buttons in line and no matter what, like they'll just, they'll just go in line according to how wide they are, right? So whatever width, you know, they are, they can be, they'll just stack in line, right? The other option is columns. So with columns, you know, if you have two, three or four columns, it doesn't really matter how wide the, you know, the actual text is inside of it because the columns will be the thing that's um, the same size, okay? So there, there are differences here and I'll show you that. All right, so the first solution here is doing the inline uh, method. All right, so let's, let's go through with that. So step one, you know, obviously setting up your form and all that, having having the actual check boxes and radio buttons here. I'll show you in my demo here. Um, I've just gone in and added a field, right? You click on add new field, and then you choose in the field options, check boxes, right? And then here I just added a bunch of check boxes, same with radio buttons. And just to clarify, it's the same um, CSS for both um, check boxes and radio buttons, okay? Uh, the step here is to add a custom class. So we're doing this so that we can target this particular module. You may not want all your modules to be the same, and in that case, you would change the custom class. So in this one, um, we're just using uh, PA checkboxes, radio buttons in line. It's a long one, but you can copy that. So this again works for checkboxes and radio buttons. And we're making it in line with this particular one. So just go here to your module, go to the settings, advanced tab, CSS, ID and classes toggle and paste that in right there. Okay, so that's how it's gonna look. And you can go ahead and save those changes. The next step is to add the snippet of CSS. And look, it's only two lines. It's very simple actually. Um, let's go ahead and click on the copy button to copy that and then go over to your website. If you have a child theme, you can put it there or you can put it in Divi theme options. That's what we do with all of our code in these tutorials. Now for me, I am going to be showing you live. So I'm gonna use uh, my Chrome extension. It's called user CSS. And this is how your, your checkboxes and radio buttons look, right? Now, as soon as you add that snippet of code, it's going to look like that. So, what we've done is pasted in the code and we've targeted the main parent of these items. Um, in, the, in the CSS, it's actually called uh, ETPB contact field options list. And then we're saying display inline block because otherwise they're just displaying, um, what is it, block, I guess, because they're going down. So now we're saying inline block and then we're also adding a little margin, right? And that's just to, to add the spacing in between, okay? So you can kind of see that even though they're different width, like each one is not the same um, amount of space wide. It's, it kind of just flows with whatever size it is. Okay, so this is the inline method. Now let's switch over and do the column option, which I think is really cool. So let's go here and it'll be very, very similar. We're gonna copy the class um, this time it says columns instead. And I have a separate uh, module here um, just for demonstration purposes, but we'll paste that in there. Same place, the advanced tab there, custom CSS and classes. And then go back here to the next step in this variation here and copy this code. And you can see that it's actually a little bit more code this time. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll show you when I put it in here, but basically here we are again. Now this one we're gonna add columns, remember? So I'll just go down below my other code. And you can see that we made three columns. Very nice looking. I could change that to four columns, watch this. If you can see, 
well, you, yeah, you can see it pretty clearly that I have 33% right here. So that's three columns, right? So if I would say 25%, now there's four columns. I mean, we, we get that, right? That's pretty simple. There's two columns because I made it 50% um, wide, right? So that's, that's simple. We're, we're targeting the, it's kind of the same thing again, where we're, we're making the parent element, this field options list. Now this time we're saying display flex, you know, with the inline one, we were doing the inline block. This time we're doing flex and then row wrap because we want it to um, basically, we want it to be in columns and also rows and we want the, the column to wrap to the next, yeah, next column. And, and then the flex basis is what we need to use in that case to get the width. So think of it as, as width and then the percentage of each column. Think of it as the column width, all right? That's how easy this is. Um, I really like this because I, I know, especially like if you have a, a lot of options, now you gotta be careful the way they stack. That's that's the one downfall there. Oops, I mean, yeah, I guess you could do, I mean, you could do other, other sizes. It wouldn't have to be the exact number, but um, like, like you saw there, if I would do like 28 or something, 28%, you know, it really doesn't matter. But there's 33 for three columns, makes it nice. And that's really the end of the tutorial. I have some explanation of the code in each one of these if you want to, you know, read a little bit more. Um, then, of course, I have this here. It's kind of an upsell. You know, I like to give you the code method and then give you the option to use our plugin. So our plugin is called the Divi Contact Form Helper. Um, basically, it's adding all the missing settings right into the module. It's not a new module. It's it's the it's in, we're injecting our settings into the existing module. It's really cool, and this will be what it looks like. So basically, let me show you that. So here I have the, our plugin installed, so it adds lots of extra settings in here, okay? So here's the checkboxes field, and if I go to field options, scroll down, look at this. I have checkbox layout, and I can say inline. So now that one's gonna be inline. Um, maybe I wanna do the second module here as I can do the radio buttons, it doesn't matter, but I could go here to field options and say columns, and then remember I was doing three, let's choose three columns. And in fact, yeah, let's, let's do it for both check boxes and uh, radio buttons. We can actually choose a different option just to make it interesting, choose two there, save this. So I did it to this first one, I did not do it to that one with the radio buttons, and then here added the two columns and three. So look how easy that was. And in fact, it felt it felt totally normal, didn't it? It felt like it was native. And that's exactly what um, our plugin does. So definitely check out that plugin. It adds, um, yeah, like 30 some, we're getting close to in the 40s, actually probably a number of, of custom settings that we've added into the regular uh, contact form module. All right, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. It's a really nice one. I know that this is just a little thing, but for your contact form, Especially if you have more than just a couple options. Obviously, if you only had one or two or three check marks or, or check boxes and radio buttons, it wouldn't be as important. But when you get a lot of options, this is really nice. And it's so simple. It's just so simple to do. So I hope you've enjoyed that. We do this every single week. Every Tuesday, you can find a tutorial here uh, released on YouTube and on our blog. So if you subscribe, that's what you'll be getting here. All right, well, we'll see you all in our next video.